Welcome to this week's Ask, where I'm going to be diving into your mountain bike questions. I'm all alone in the shed this week on my own. It's uh, pretty lonely, but I've got little Dan Lloyd and, of course, the rat to keep me company. Guy's behind the camera. We've been talking Canadian ice hockey, but I don't think that's going to make it into the show. But you guys are. So let's get into the first question this week from Mo. He's saying, I've been getting out riding quite a lot. I'm getting confident. Um, I feel myself trying hard on the trails, um, but when other people are watching, I'm not feeling comfortable. Um, as a female rider, sorry Mo, female rider, um, trail centers are often very male dominated. Um, they are, that's true. Um, and this adds to the pressure, any tips? Well, you know what Mo, um, I, I always think that mountain bikers and all cycling community are such friendly people, but at first they do look intimidating, especially at a trail center where there's all these guys with all their pads on and full face helmets and goggles. But everyone has had to learn this stuff and almost everyone loves being able to give a little bit of their learning over to another rider and show them some compassion and understanding of what it's like to learn. So everyone's been there, we've all had to learn. So don't feel too bad about it. The confidence that comes from actually doing it. So riding in front of people, feeling more comfortable. On a trail center, really great, great way to do it is maybe follow those guys down on a train, get on the back end of it, just get comfortable, you're part of the crew. When you get down to the bottom, it's all high fives and suddenly you're not so nervous about people watching the riding. But I know how you feel, it can take a step into the unknown, but once you do it, it feels really great. And of course, then you're part of the crew and the trail center becomes your trail center. So get out there and uh, test it out. I'm sure you can do it. Right, next question is from David Carvalho and he says, uh, GMBN, hey, love your videos. Thanks very much. Um, hope you're doing well. Recently, my, sitter post, uh, my seat post is sliding down the frame. Um, I don't have any grease there. Um, the clamp is tightened right up, even tighter than it needs to be. What should I do? Oh, this is a tricky one. Um, you know what I think it could have happened is you might have stripped the thread on your seat clamp um, and effectively it's not tightening. You think it's tightening, you're trying to get the seat post as tight as you can and you've gone through the thread and it's basically lost its ability to clamp up on the seat post. That could be it. If that's the case, then you need to helicoil the thread, which is effectively put a new thread in there um, and maybe go up in a bolt size. But can be fixed, that's what I look for. Um, any other suggestions from you guys out there of what that could be, we could help David out. Let us know in the comment section below, as you can do all throughout this show. Uh, next question from Jack Mantifel, and he says, Ask GMBN, when is the best time of the year to go to Whistler? Oh, that's a tricky one, because Whistler, obviously over in BC, Canada, is somewhere I rode last year, and we'll get to that in a moment. Um, I think a really great time of year to visit uh, Whistler is when Crankworks is on, because it's a special event. You see some incredible riding, and you get to just get involved and be part of that event. But I have heard from some of the locals that the sweet spot just after Whistler, is fi uh, Whistler Crankworks has finished is amazing because all of the trails are pretty gnarly, rutted in, it's a real wild ride. Uh, and you get to have the park at that point feeling a little bit like all to yourself because everyone's left. So maybe that's the right time to go. The other option is just before, where they've been preparing all of the trails for Crankworks itself. Uh, and you've got the opposite, where it's all smooth and beautiful and you go as fast as you like. That's the window, the slot I would look at um, if I was going again and I plan to. Uh, and while we're on the subject, why don't we take a quick look at me riding down Whistler itself, because you know what? I had a great time. I'm too sexy for my shorts. So good! <laughs> yes! Yes! First bit done! Dude, that was amazing! <laughs> what kind of wish am I? Wind in the hair. It's so good. <laughs> so good. That 
Man, that was just out of the coolest. Yes! <laughs> Shredding Suwini says, um, any news on the Fox Live valve system and do you think it will be realised by Sea Otter this year? Now, I'm going to be absolutely upfront with you um, guys, I hadn't heard of this system that much. Uh, I spoke to Doddy, who's popped out onto the trails today, uh, and he said he thinks it is going to be ready at Sea Otter. He's hoping to see it. He said that lots of brands have actually been thinking about how they're going to fit this system to their bikes already. Um, so everything's in place. We just need to see the system itself. It should be ready at Sea Otter, so fingers crossed. I, uh, it sounds amazing. I'm really looking forward to seeing it. Uh, it might link up with DI2, Doddy's not sure yet, but basically an ele electronic system that is going to work with your suspension. That sounds incredible, uh, very, very tech. Uh, when I asked Doddy about it, his eyes just lit up. He cannot wait. He's going to Sea Otter, and if it's there, he will be talking all about it. And obviously, we will be putting all of that video on GMBN itself, so keep your eyes peeled for that. But thanks for the question. It was really cool to find out about that. Now, Marcus Oliver says, um, just wondering if you could 3D print a mech hanger. Um, not sure if they would be strong enough. Possible hack and probably bodge. Any thoughts, welcome. Um, you know what? I reckon you could. I've had a bit of experience with 3D printing because um, we had to 3D print some bits for the bike I rode in Whistler, actually, uh, to help me keep my feet on the pedals uh, and to keep the pedals in a certain position so they wouldn't unclick while I was going down the trail. Uh, and I was absolutely amazed what this 3D printing design could do. Uh, Tom Wheeler um, over at Not Broken helped me out make this part um, and it was my first experience of 3D printing. He also managed to 3D print the, the frame that sits the battery on my bike, which is incredible. It was a really technical piece, needed to be strong, so there was strength there. You can use different materials. And of course, Robot Bike, they're actually 3D printing in titanium powder to make bikes. 3D printing bikes. So I'm pretty sure you could do a mech hanger. I can't wait for the day when you can download download a bike and just print it in your garage. Imagine that, that would be amazing. That could happen, it's not that far-fetched. Great question. Right, next one from Jim Martin, and he says, do you have any tips for a roadie getting into cross-country or marathon riding? Well, you know what, I think concentrating on your riding skills is uh, really, really helpful. Practicing things like track stand, that'll give you a lot of confidence. The one thing that you're going to experience in mountain biking uh, that you're not going to get so much of in road riding is really slow speed turns, especially turns with undulation in them, drops on the other side of the turn, or going into a, a climb itself. Those kind of positions really make a difference to your riding, um, and you need to get used to that. So start playing with those things, and you can do that in a very small space. You don't have to go out on a marathon ride. Find a little piece of uh, grassland with some trees in it and ride up round the trees. Just play with the different ground levels and uh, undulation of the floor, and you'll really feel like your confidence moves on. So I would concentrate on those skills, really, really simple skills. Um, balance is what it's all about in mountain biking uh, and it comes so fast so that's where you'll find the confidence um, you know what we did look into this a little bit as well so we've got a video here that we can take a little peek at it's is mountain biking harder than road riding let's see what it looked like I'm gonna go for a trail ride you know normal trail ride quite hard and record my heart rate and power data and compare that to a road ride of the same duration but what we need is a road rider where do you think we're gonna find one of those Who's that? <laughs> it's Dan Lloyd. Hi boys. Well. So that grown out there yet then? <laughs> yeah. Skids and wheelies going good. Oh no. Not Dan Lloyd. I've never really liked Dan Lloyd. Matt Stevens is my favourite. That is a good video. I love that. Um, everyone was good sports on that one. Right, next question um, is from Ghibli. Good name. GCN has done it. Um, when will GMBN do it? Hashtag female presenter. I know, how good is that? Emma Pooley is on GCN. That is absolutely incredible. World time trial champion, Olympic medalist, world medalist. 
unbelievable rider yes and she is now part of the GCN crew so welcome Emma it's fantastic news you know what on GMBN we're always thinking about getting a female presenter um, we have in all honesty approached a few riders but the ones we've spoke to to be fair, are still doing very, very well in their riding careers, uh, and they just haven't got time. Uh, they have for the odd video here and there, but obviously we want to bring someone in and be part of the crew full time. We are looking out for someone. Hey, maybe it's you. You know what? Send us a video, a little bit of a, you know, CV of um, could you do it? That would be quite interesting. I'd love that, actually. I'd love it if someone sent in a video saying I could be a presenter on GMBN. Do it. Why not? Could be your next job. Um, but yeah, we are looking. Next question is from Sethi Beha, and it says, can I ride enduro in a dirt jump helmet? <laughs> Whoa. Well, Guy, what do you think of that? Oh, that's a shrug of the shoulders from Guy. I tell you what, I wouldn't. I, I would. I wouldn't, I would. I wouldn't, you should wear a helmet. Always wear a helmet, even if all you've got is a skate park helmet. Um, a jump helmet um, but if we're talking about should you whether it looks right or not it's gonna look weird it is gonna look weird but I guess my answer has got to be if that's your helmet then wear it okay even if you're gonna look a bit of a numpty um, you know what I've been to skate parks and worn full face helmets when I was not doing anything that required a full face helmet um, I've been out on a downhill ride wearing my trials helmet. You know, I've been out loads of times where I've worn the wrong helmet. At the end of the day, you gotta keep your head safe. So just do that. Don't worry about what's cool and what's not. Stay in one piece, stay in one piece. <laughs> okay, next question, Owen Land says, um, I'm a religious clipped in rider and I'm always trying to talk my friends into doing the same because um, they all ride flats. Uh, what sort of advantages um, are they going to get if they make the change? So making the change from flat pedals to clip pedals. You know, we get asked this question about pedals all the time, all the time. Um, and it's because they're two very different things and they've got huge advantages. If you're coming from clips onto flats, you're going to gain something. And if you're coming from flats, onto clips, you are gonna gain something. So let's focus on that. Why would you move from flats to clips? Well, clips, it's more efficient. You're gonna get a lot more power out of your legs in clips. Um, a lot more control in your pedal stroke. You can make it a much more circular pedal stroke, which means you get all of that power down through the bottom of the stroke and up. You can pull as well as push. Really makes a difference. Um, and you'll get a lot more out of your body. Um, some riders feel like they've got much more control with clips. You know, that that's that's kind of the, the paradox of this situation is some riders just have to be on flats because they've got the most control. Some riders have to be on clips because they've got the most control. It comes down to personal preference. The only way you can really find out what's for you is to have tried both. But there's definite advantages in efficiency on a clip pedal. So I'd focus on that. That's what you're gonna notice. Whether it suits your riding style and you feel in more control, I don't know. But don't le let the old time-honored uh, problem of what will happen if I can't unclip my feet, it's much easier than you think. You might have a tumble here and there where you just topple over to the side, but you know what? It's more comedy than painful. So go with it, try clips and see if it suits you. Next question from So W, and he is asking, at the moment I'm riding a Canyon Neuron. Um, thank you, they're a channel partner, I appreciate that. 120 mil travel, um, but I wanna ride more difficult descents, jumps and drops. Uh, also wanna keep riding up here on the home trails. Um, so should he buy an enduro for the home trails um, or a downhill bike for the bike parks and free riding? Uh, maybe something like the Canyon Talk. <clears throat> God, this is tricky because you know, if you get something like a Canyon Talk, like a free ride bike or a downhill bike, you're gonna be really limited when it comes to climbs on your home trails. Um, that's really gonna suffer. Of course, they'll be great downhill. You know, a modern enduro bike, it can handle more, almost anything. 150 travel, um, you're gonna be able to do the climbs, you're gonna be able to do the descents. Look at Sam Hill, he raced uh, the Worlds in Cairns in Australia last year on his EWS bike. He took on the downhill boys, he came sixth. He nearly won 
worlds on the enduro bike. So you're not gonna come across anything that you can't hit on the trails. So I'd go enduro if I was you. But you know what, this question, we've took it on quite a few times ourselves. Um, and in this video, Blank's, Blake Sampson, Blank, Blake's, and in this video, Blake Sampson took on trail bike versus downhill bike. Let's take a look at what he come up with. That wasn't bad for a small bike. Fire. This is where I race through loads of questions. Uh, we don't dwell on anything um, and we just get moving. Uh, Elon, I hope it's Musk. Elon, I hope it is. Elon says, we haven't got tabletops as big as Doddy's hair on the home trails. That's not really a question, I'll be honest. That's more of a statement. I don't know how Doddy's gonna take that one. Thanks Elon though, I love your cars. Okay, Dilemma says, ask GMBN, why isn't little Dan Lloyd wearing a helmet? I don't know, it's a good question. Little Dan Lloyd, little Dan Lloyd, done lots of tricks, never gets spoiled. He's really, really great. I love him, I really love him. Um, I don't know why he's not wearing a helmet. I think it's so we can admire his amazing hair. Dan Lloyd in real life has got amazing hair. He's a very, very beautiful man. And he was a pro roadie and I think he won the Tour de France. He might not have won the Tour de France. I don't know much about road riding. I'm sure he could have won the Tour de France. Anyway, moving on. Quick fire round. Uh, Matthias Pina says, can you make a sick edit of Martin riding his wheelchair? Well, you know what? I was out the other day and uh, I took on some street. So take a look at this. Ooh. I nearly went there. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> that is supposed to be a practice. <laughs> Let me have a think a minute. Okay. Oh. some work. I wouldn't say it was a sick edit. It's quite awkward and embarrassing, but you know what? I'm trying, but I think I need to improve. Thanks for bringing it up though. I appreciate it. Right. Next one is from Leviathank. Leviathand K. Leviathand K. Next one is from Levi Leviath. I don't know how to say this name. I'm going to move on. Next one is from Leviathan K and it says best game of bike type video is still Blake versus Ollie Wilkins. I disagree. I think the best game of bike was actually me versus Hans Ray. Well, Hans Ray won. Well it, well, it wasn't me. It was Hans Ray versus the GMB and crew and Hans Ray won. I think that's the best one, but I'm a Hans Ray freak. I think he's great. Next question, Sam Noble says, where is the good trails in Amsterdam? I'm from the UK and I'm taking my bike away for the first time, thanks Sam. You know what, I have never ridden in Amsterdam. Um, I don't know, but maybe some of you guys can help us out. If you've ever ridden in Amsterdam, then let Sam know in the comment section down below. Give him some ideas, he's going on a trip, he wants it to be that of a lifetime in Amsterdam. I'm sure he's gonna have a good time. Let us know where he's gonna ride. Um, right, time for, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, time for correct me if I'm wrong. And this week it's Matthew Butler who's taking on this flat gap. It's quite a big gap actually. Um, and he does a pretty good job, I've gotta be fair. But let's see if we can improve it. So here comes Matthew running in. It's got good speed. It is a big gap this, it is a big gap. So fair play for taking it on. Here he goes, rep. Okay, Matthew, let's get into it. Let's break it down, see if we can improve your jump. Now, just doing it in stop frames, I think, and I've looked at it quite a few times, the only way I'd improve it is you've just missed the lip with your timing with your front wheel. So you're just a bit late. Your front wheel just rolls off the edge. So little Dan Lloyd's gonna help me here. As you're coming up the jump, as you see there, instead of taking a lift about there and then jumping into it, you've 
kind of lost the front end off the lip and your back wheel follows, which means you don't have a really great trajectory through the air. If you'd lifted it a little bit sooner, you'd have had a bit more control and you can see when you jump, you just start to lose its shape as you're going across because your front's kind of pulled you off the lip of the jump. Good effort, but I hope that helps. Just get your timing a little bit more accurate, lift that front, but you're going well. Right, thank you for watching Ask GMBN this week. Uh, remember, this is a show that you can get involved with. So leave your questions in the comments section down below for next week's show uh, and we'll get into them and hopefully you'll appear on Ask GMBN. That would be great. Now, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you want to see some more from GMBN, then click over here to watch how to ride routes. And over here, you can see how to improve your jumping fast. Um, if you click the globe just there, you can subscribe to the GMBN channel and I'd love it if you gave us a thumbs up like um, because that looks really good on my CV you know how it is got to keep a job um, I'll see you next week thanks for watching <laughs>